whether you're a suburban athlete or an Olympic champion, you've got to work hard to get results. We've put over 15 years' experience into developing Active Man, combining vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Active Man helps provide you with the nutrients you need to optimize performance and assist recovery. Discover the Active Man range now available. Active Man, power up. Welcome to this week's Power Progress podcast, and I have an amazing guest speaker who's come back for the second time. Andrew Tracy to join me on series number three and we're actually going to be featuring this on the video as well so I can actually see him in his home this time and I think last time he was in a busy gym but I'll bring you in mate how you doing? I'm great thanks how are you? Great well really good actually we had a little pre-chat before we went live and we kind of just went on a massive chat and we thought it'd be quite good to talk about something along the lines business versus passion is that what we'll go off into today? Yeah, 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 I think so. I think we did have a mad tangent there, didn't we? We had quite a good uh, quite a good chat there. I'm going to do my best to try and kind of recall some of the, the goodness that we just brought up. But I think, yeah, that's a, a really interesting topic, particularly in fitness, I think. I think so. But, but bef- before we go off on that, how we connected is, obviously, you was an inspiration of mine. You was on the front cover of Men's Health and you're actually fitness editor of Men's Health, which is hugely inspirational. It must be something you... Obviously, you got passionate about doing that alone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, massively. Like, I'm 33 now. I've been in the I've got my first job in a gym when I was 16 or 17, 17, I think. So, I've been here, you know, been in this space for a very long time, uh, kind of in the midst of that. I've, I've explored other industries whilst also kind of staying in fitness, which I think it's given me a really good, uh, I kind of look at it like this sort of journeyman type thing where I've had the opportunity to learn and work in the fitness space and, uh, and accrue this knowledge but also go away and and try running businesses and working in other sectors that kind of maybe are not antithetical to fitness but perhaps you wouldn't think um you know would have any sort of carryover but i think what that's enabled me to do is really experience kind of like what fitness is and how it applies to to everybody and how we as coaches and people in the fitness space can can translate that because I, I think there, there probably would have been a real danger if I'd continued kind of working in commercial gyms like into my 20s or into my late 20s into my 30s and whatnot uh, that I could have just never have experienced life outside of being in the in the gym setting if that makes yeah. sense I think sometimes that can make it really hard um, to you know connect with not connect with but maybe fully understand your, you know, what your clients are going through, what the people you're writing for are going through and stuff like that. So I'm really glad yeah. I got to go away and run businesses in other sectors whilst I was still kind of, um, you know, in the fitness industry in terms of continuing my education and continuing network and whatnot. And to then go away, and I think this was this is kind of a nice full circle thing of what I was just saying, to then be working at I Men's Health as the, as the fitness editor uh, is something I'm extremely proud of. Um just because it enables me to kind of take that, as I say, that experience of having this, this, you know, 15, 16, 17 year um, time in the fitness industry, but also having experience kind of like, you know, full-time working on really full-time 90 hour work weeks outside of fitness yeah. and go like, what are the lessons I've learned here and how can they then help, you know, other people and potentially, and this is a big thing for me that we'll probably get into on the subject of business, but potentially people who maybe either you know don't have access to can't afford or just wouldn't go and hire a coach or get an online coach or those sorts of things take this this information and this network of people that you know i've i've been lucky enough to work with and consider my peers and put them in print and put it you know in in the magazine on the shelf of a bp garage where that's much more accessible than you know say hiring a PT or whatnot. So that, that, that for me is what a, a lot of this is about, is about kind of accessibility to this information and kind of, and I know, you know, we've got social media now, we've, we've got all these great resources, we've got the internet, we've got social media. And that, so this information is, is out there for everybody. And there's certainly, you know, a criticism of, you know, more mainstream fitness advice, and, uh, you know, I was kind of an empath where I was like, well, I can 
pick up my phone and keep making videos on my phone about this is good information and, you know, myth busting and this kind of stuff, or, you know, cause there's loads of great people doing that in that space, or I could go and look at, at the mainstream narrative and how can we get in there and how can we help that? How can we help provide a, a perspective from, from the, from the fitness industry? Yeah. So that, that's kind of what that was. Well, that's been great for for me, and I'm I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to be in the, the position I'm in there. Yeah, I mean it is fantastic what you do, and I think what we was kind of discussing. It's interesting that we've both been in the industry for a very long time now, and even though I reflect on other peers around me, you've went more on to being the business side, as in coaching people in business. But yeah, I'm still happy to be that coach to help others because I've got that passion and mm. I enjoy doing it. That's what I like. And that's what I feel I want to do. But so many people can go down just that business mindset of it and can actually lose their way of why they did it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And this has actually been a really interesting, like we were saying before we start recording, a really interesting thing to watch unfold over the last sort of 16 years is now there's this huge... And there's this huge overlap or this, you know, this very tight Venn diagram between um, fitness, coaches, PTing, whatever you want to call it, and and business and marketing and, and business coaching. And there seems to be this, this massive overlap. And it's something I, I think about all the time. And I'm not sure if it occurs as much in other industries or... But I think about a lot, like, why is that? Is it the type of people that sort of gravitate towards this industry? Is it something about the industry itself that kind of pushes you in a direction? Or, you know, is it the fact that a lot of people in the industry in the form of personal trainers are, you know, self-employed by nature? So you, you kind of have to have that, you know, you kind of have to have that sales edge. And I know that, you know, for me, that was something I was absolutely rubbish at as a young mm-hmm as a young PT, like I really struggled with it. I really struggled with like the sales admin, you know, and I still, as I said to you, as I said to you, when you kind of suggested this as a topic, like I'm a very bad businessman. Like I am, you know, I'm not financially motivated. Like I have no real, no real, you know, I don't chase money. But yeah, it's, it's been interesting to watch that. And now, as I said to you before, there's a, a thing I think about a lot is I wonder if there's a danger of young people, or, you know, like young people, young PTs, young coaches getting into the industry and this business side of it, like, uh, you know, upscale your business and this amount of figures. And it's all great. Like, I don't have a problem with any of it, just to be clear from the top, like it, everyone's got to eat and it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they're now getting into it and they're seeing that, well, this is such a huge part of, you know, this is a part of what a PT does. And as I said to you, that there's people I know in this space or I'm aware of in this space who are kind of really well known for how good they are at marketing or their marketing tips. And that's great because that's their space. That's their niche. Yeah. But then I'm like, I look and I'm like, I don't actually know how good you are as as a coach as a pt and i don't mean that in a derogatory sense i'm not saying i'm not saying they're good i mean i literally don't have a clue because they don't talk about it um and it just it it very much interests me and i i wonder why that's sprung up i wondered why that sprung up and the the only the one big danger i see of it not you know not a danger but it's that kind of cliche of you know, if you're, if you're just chasing your money all the time, is that going to make you happy? Whereas this has, at least in my experience, traditionally been an industry where it's very passion based yeah. for a lot of people. You know, it's a rare industry in that in that regard, actually. You know, there's yeah. a lot of people who aren't fortunate enough to that you see it all the time in sort of like self-help stuff and this all toxic, not, not, not like positivity type stuff. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, go after your passion, chase your why, which is super cool. But there's a lot of industries where people just don't have that or. Yeah. It's not a natural passion, isn't it? Something they may develop because. Of yeah. The, yeah. The yeah, yeah. 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 But even then, like people may go and, you know, all jobs have got to be done. And uh, this is probably quite deep, but obviously you can, you, you know, I'm a big believer that you can find 
passion in your own personal development therefore it doesn't really matter what industry you're in but i do find the kind of the the rhetoric of um you got to find your why and you got to do this and you got to do that uh you know it's probably there's a lot of people doing jobs that are well-paid jobs like they're good jobs but they're, yeah they don't have any interest in them. That's fine. That's, you know, that's absolutely fine because I don't believe your job should necessarily be your identity. But I do think that uh, particularly in coaching, particularly in fitness, where so much of what you do, particularly if you're, you know, you are one-to-one coaching people, so much of what you do is personality driven. Yeah. It's driven by you. It's not, you're not doing calculations. You're not just making decisions. You're not just designing stuff. Not just, no, these are all great jobs. You know, so much of it is based around your energy and your personality. How does that then translate to, you know, someone who's just mega financially based? And in which case, like, what happens then when there's lean times financially? You know, I'm a... I, you know, I know from personal experience and I know from knowing, you know, tons of coaches and having friends in the industry that a lot of the times it's the passion for helping people. And I know that's such a cliche at this point, yeah. but it's the passion for helping people that keeps them going through, through those like slightly leaner times. And I know, you know, I've been really fortunate to have found, um, you know, to, to have found something I'm incredibly passionate about and even, you know, even in times when the temptation might be to think, I don't really get paid enough for that, the amount of work I'm doing here or the hours I'm putting in, it doesn't matter because you, you, you're you kind of striving for something greater. Uh, yeah. And I do wonder if you come into the industry and you're so kind of, not brainwashed, it's not the right word, but there's so much of the culture is built around like, become a six-figure seller, like a build your online coaching platforms so you know and you see the stuff now that's actively like stop wasting your time coaching one-to-one and you're like well you know a lot of people that's their passion that's mm. their passion and if you want to scale that up like that's super cool and i'm that you know i know for a fact there's some really incredible coaches that have massively scaled online coaching businesses and you know it's good because i know the people the information yeah. is great the support is great but I, you know, I wonder if someone comes in young and they don't, you know, they, they go straight to that place of yeah. skip, scale this business out to 200 clients, 300 clients, whatever it is. And they, they don't maybe appreciate going through the motions of building a depth of experience and working with people and uh, expanding their knowledge. There's very, you kind of get yeah. the impression and this is just the way, this is the way market, you know, business marketers sell it. This impression of, look, you can go and qualify. You can go get your, you know, your, you go become a reps level free PT. And the next week you're building this online business. And that's mm. to- like, like, that's totally cool. Like totally, you know, go for it. Um, but where's the emphasis on like, are you actually good at this job though? <laughs> I say I have to intervene there because it's funny. I had that little conflict myself where, I love doing one-to-one. I love it. And it was that part where I got that business coach and they was like, well, you have to go online. I was like, I don't mind going online, but I will not give up one-to-one because I enjoy doing that. That's a passion. I feel like that is also a very good service I can provide. So I've always stopped on my guns that I've now classed myself as a hybrid. Someone comes to me and says, well, oh, you're an online coach. No, I'll do both. And I think it depends on the character you're coaching. Some of them actually works really well online because they just need to be educated on the things they need to do. And they've got enough experience in the gym. They can get on with it. But actually, some people don't want any of that. They actually just want to be coached on a one-to-one basis. So I think each of these provides something. And I have experience listening to certain coaches where, like I said, oh, you, you could make seven figures or six figures and it's like, where's that line where you can see people focus so much on the business side, they've completely lost that coaching side because all their education side has now gone so much onto that. They actually start forgetting the education of what's important. And that is obviously coaching. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like, you you know, you get your PT qualification, that's it. You're the finished product now. And, you, you know, you see almost like... 
uh, templated, you know, people will sell you templated uh, social media strategies and people will sell you templated. And you know what, if you're a good coach, this is all like fine. And uh, the great thing I think about online coaching is it's scalable um, for a coach, but it's also like, it also makes a lot of this information accessible and affordable for a lot mm. of people. And I think that's something that's got, this is a conversation I had with someone recently who was really bashing online training and really saying like, you can never beat, you can never beat one-to-one training. I was like, dude, not everyone can afford it. Mm. But if you can, you, you can give someone, someone that space somewhere in between where you're giving them online coaching and it's not like templated programming and they they're accountable yeah. to you and you're having conversations back and forth and you are coaching them. Yeah. That's very affordable for some people. And um, it enables them to then, you know, it's more than just money. It's, it's scheduling and it, it, it's stuff like that. If you, if you're giving someone online program and you're, you're coaching them, but they're, you know, they're going to work doing that in their own time. Yeah. Then fantastic. And then another thing I think that online coaching has done and brought and kind of brought to the the forefront is this has changed in recent years, but I can remember a time when I would work with PTs who would do their session with their client and nothing else outside of that session. They wouldn't program for their client. So you've got like, like how effective is that really? So the same guys, you know, you can make the argument, yeah, you can't be be one-to-one training, but if you're just doing one hour a week, and there's no thought beyond that. And that's very much changed now. Like there's, so, you know, there's a much greater emphasis on nutritional coaching with your clients. I think technology uh, has certainly helped the admin side as well, hasn't it? Because obviously for me to update programs and nutrition plans, I've got all this technology built into the app, which takes yeah. all the writing everything back out and oh, all that out of the yeah. equation, you know? <laughs> yeah, like I'm, I'm like old enough to remember, I'm to show my age here, but like, uh, we used to write people's programs on yeah. these blue cards, so like <laughs> hand write their programs. They'd all go in a they'd all go in a box, and then um, you know I was a really early proponent of uh, how, you know helping people establish their macros, and we're talking like pre we're talking pre iPhone, let alone pre yeah. like my fitness pal. And I remember having a spreadsheet um, uh, that would you know calculate calculate someone's macros and you could change I could, i'll have to i don't know i'll, I'll never be able to find it now because we we're talking over a decade ago but that was tough and uh, you know yeah. what we've got now has made it a lot more scalable and when when we can scale things it means and this is like you know basic business principles when you can scale something it means you can reduce the price of it and ultimately that's a great thing for the consumer especially when we're talking about something like access to fitness information which is helpful helpful and i think that you know nobody wants to be the starving artist but at the same time you can you that a lot of the kind of rhetoric about motivation in fitness is built around that like yeah i just want to help people i just want to do this i just want to do that and then like charging through the nose, which is fine because, you know, some things just cost what they cost and that's the way it is. But is the product like the product has to be first in any business. And like we were saying before, that's you as a coach. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, I, get, I don't get worried, but like the way I've seen the industry go with that big overlap we spoke about between coaching and business and 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 like making the money and scaling your business and get x amount of clients is this like the 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 foundation of that always has to be on are you a good coach are you continue like is the service you're providing is it good um yeah i think that's that's important i think maybe that's the crux of it is like that it that's what it always needs to be back brought back to I totally agree. I think that's kind of what's happened now. People getting drawn in about, oh, you can you can be an online coach. You don't have to do that much work. You can yeah. earn lots of money. They're, they're given this story, but that's the wrong reason. They should want to be that coach to help others and do a good service. And then these added bolt-ons just help you be a better coach as opposed yeah. to the other way around. And I think that yeah. is what's happened a lot in the industry. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think, and this is probably maybe a little bit philosophical, but the ultimately your own like personal self development and your own, um, you know, your comfort with knowing that you know you you are 
providing the best service and being the best version of yourself on a professional level, um, you, you can't put a price on that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people you see who are super happy, like in their business, it's because they know they're doing a really good job yeah. and that's something really self-congratulatory, not in a bad way, but like about that. It's a very rewarding is probably a better word about knowing, look, I just put my all into that. I'm not half arsing it. And I, I think that maybe there's a, there's a group of people, there's some people who may, maybe don't have that, but they are making money. And something I think about a lot is when that money goes, what do you fall back on? Like, yeah where do you if you never bothered not never bothered but there was never a focus on you being the best version of yourself doing your job how do you then look back and go right what can i change here you're just kind of like well i just need to get more clients again um yeah yeah it's a weird one it's just it's been something very interesting to observe and if i were to kind of like you know in my humble humble opinion um if i were to kind of theorize as to why there is that overlap it's possibly that historically speaking fitness and and pt and all that stuff has been such a and this is something that's changing like now but such an image driven yeah uh kind of industry um and you know you've kind of got image and status and all these things overlap we're, we're creating an image and you used to see this years ago where it was like, oh, you're selling a lifestyle. That was a big, you know, that was a big thing in, 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 uh, in fitness, particularly in PTing. It's like, you're selling a lifestyle. So look a certain way, you know, you've got to, you've got to be the, and there's some truth to this, but like be the, the thing that your clients aspire to now, by and large, I, I don't think that's the most important thing in the world at all, but you can see how that spirals, yeah. to out of control to okay i want to look good and i want to have money and all these things and i can see then how it's appealing if someone is saying you're gonna you're gonna make bank doing this or just scale up just get more clients and yeah yeah definitely yeah i mean i think the key is as a just to summarize is um if someone's in the industry obviously they got to keep themselves getting educated with how they're going to help their clients i think that's the most important thing. The second thing is who are they, what is their niche? What they're trying to target, who are they trying to target? Who can they help? Have they achieved that themselves? And if they haven't, how are they getting that knowledge to help someone else? As opposed to looking at how much they can make from that person or you know, all that side of things. So I think that's I think that will summarize it pretty well, don't you? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And look, like uh like we said at the beginning, there's lots of industries, I'd argue most, like most jobs don't have the have the luxury of you having some underlying passion behind it. And I'm, I'm going to pick some jobs at random here, and this is in no way uh, derogatory towards any of them, but like, uh, you know, if I was working in the co-op, I, I'm probably not doing it because my passion, maybe, you know, maybe there's obviously people who are, but I'm not doing it because my passion is working in like small shop retail. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing it because my passion is selling people like meal deals. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's absolutely cool. Like you don't have to have your, you know, you don't have to have some big passion, but, and I'd imagine there's so many jobs like that. Like, yeah. And that, you know, if you're a civil servant, if you're working in a bank, like all these things, like fantastic jobs, you might earn great money. You might be very happy and you might have other things in your life that are very fulfilling, but you're not necessarily doing the job because you have some passion about it. No, I would say that in fitness, we're so lucky that we have a space where we can be passionate about a job. So let's not uh, kind of... <sighs> lose sight of that or let's kind of take that for granted take that for granted i would say like particularly if you're someone who's you've decided to get into you know get into fitness because it's your passion you know because you love training whatever it is so you i'm going to make it my job what a privilege that is and you know it's not as people point out all the time it's not always the not always it's what it's cut you know what you kind of thought it would be but like what a privilege it is to be able to work in a space and have a kind of purpose that you're very passionate about Mm. let's not kind of waste that let's not let 
let's not lose sight of how privileged we are to have that in the in the pursuit of kind of in a pursuit of money and thinking that the marketing and the xxx is is the most important part because i think there's so much that you know you you know yourself there's so much that you can uh withdraw and earn that's not financial that comes from the kind of emotional kickback you get from working yeah. with people and, and helping people and that will never go away even if you're not yeah. getting paid um so kind of balancing that or putting that first and having that as your, I think having that as your underpinning drive is probably, probably so important. You know, if you've got that, go away, scale your business. There's some people I know that I'm incredibly, uh, you know, I'm in awe of and incredibly respectful of who've built huge yeah. scaled fitness businesses. This isn't, this is by no means some argument for like, no, you should just be doing one-to-one PT because yeah, cool. Like, cool. If you you're making it more affordable, you're making it scalable, you're making it flexible, you make creating this option for people and it's enabling you to work with people on the other side of the world. Yeah. Amazing. Like you say, it's incredible what technology has done. But I think if you always kind of bring it back to the passion and you know why you're why you're in this industry and how fortunate you are to be able to uh, work in this space that you love, that's a great thing. Yeah, I think that's a good way of finishing off. And if you're listening to this, it'd be great to hear from you. Leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts about this. Have you been in that situation where you've kind of let money take over your passion? Have you been there yourself? Have you experienced maybe you've been coached by someone and not necessarily feel like you've had that service? It'd be great to hear from you. But thanks for having you, Andrew. It'd be great to have you back again. And yes, um, let's, yeah. let's, make, let's make it a trilogy, mate. Anytime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Thank you very much. See you later, okay, mate. Right. Bye.